Hey everybody, what's up? This is Chris from T3 Handicapping, and I wanted to say thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be going over the Late Pick 5 from Churchill Downs on Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. I thank you for your patience in uh, in our lull after Indiana Grand, but we are back and excited to uh, hit it here at Churchill. Uh, before we jump into things, I do want to say thank you for your continued support of T3 Handicapping. All right, so um, if you are uh, interested, maybe this is your first time coming to the page uh, or first time coming to the stream, uh, if you are interested in following these picks a little bit more closely, you can always find us obviously here on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook, T3 Handicapping, or Twitter at handicapping t3, uh, and feel free to follow along. Uh, for even more content, if you want to purchase picks, uh, any of that stuff, our website is t3handicapping.weebly.com. You can find everything that you will need right there, uh, including uh, the ability to purchase subscriptions. So uh, we're no longer selling like all track packages for just a day um, or individual track packages. We're just selling it month by month. Uh, my hope is that I can offer to you a more budget friendly approach to that. Um, right now we're running a promotion for November. $5 gets you the entire month of November access to every track every day that we do just one $5 fee, and you've got it until November 30th. Uh, starting in December, we will go to our regular rate, which will be $10 for 30 days, regardless of when you sign up. So it won't be till the end of the month. It will just be uh, 30 days from the date of purchase, uh, and there will be an annual subscription as well so that you can just get access to a full year. And again, that will be our best value uh, because I know that when you're putting up your hard-earned dollars day after day, trying to beat a 20% takeout, uh, that you don't want to be spending a ton of extra money trying to purchase handicapping materials that are going to help you win. And ultimately, that's our goal here at T3 is to help you cash more tickets. So with that being said, let's jump into the late pick five from Churchill Downs on Wednesday. Now, the reason I decided to go with the late pick five here is I started by handicapping the entire card. Uh, and I like to do that first, and then I like to come back and say, okay, based on my opinions, where do I think we should be playing? And I came up with the late pick five because I've got a really strong opinion in, in race number five, and then I've got a, a pretty open race uh, in race number nine where I think I've got some prices. And so with races five and nine being the bookends of the pick five, it was an obvious choice for a sequence that I'm interested in playing a little bit tomorrow. So uh, let's go ahead and let's jump into the materials themselves and see what we have. So I'm going to jump right down right away to the beginning of this late pick five. And you can see right away, here's my big opinion here, which is that I don't like the favorites. Now, I could be wrong. They they may go cold on the board and, and maybe this won't be as great of a betting opportunity as I think. But as it stands right now, the top two choices on the morning line are number seven, Honey Parade, and number eight, Chakra. Saving Sophie, the number three horse, comes in as the third selection. And that's actually my worst rated horse on the board. Now, KBG is co-third choice. Um, and I think as the board starts to settle, particularly depending on how things go in the early phases of the card, KBG will more than likely, I think, end up as the third choice in, in the betting. But we'll have to kind of wait and see on that. So here's why I don't like the favorites. Obviously, as you can see, they don't rate out extremely well on my numbers. Um, you can see from over here, you just don't see a ton of 7 and 8s, particularly towards the front. Certainly 7 more so than anybody else. Uh, when we look here, you can see that um, a couple of things. Even though these horses are forwardly placed, the 7 and the 8, uh, which I tend to like at Churchill, you'll notice that their early pace isn't great. Because we're looking to only have probably a moderate pace on in this race, it concerns me that not only do they not have pace, but they also struggle with the race flow, which because of the fact that we're projecting this to be moderate is going to favor horses on or near the lead. Uh, these horses are not appearing to be on or near the lead based on our pace figures. Um, and then when the race comes for home, I don't have them as having particularly uh, a strong enough kick to make up the ground uh, that they're going to need to overcome in that spot. So I'm highly against them. Chakra, I have as fair value 8 to 1. Uh, Honey Parade, I have as fair value 18 to 1. And 100 to 1 just means I don't even have a price on them. 
uh, basically that's kind of a throwaway line there. So uh, I don't like that this one's a closer and, and just doesn't look to get it here, especially if the pace is moderate. That's going to be really hard to do on the Churchill course. So I love a race like this to start off because I feel like I can get some separation by throwing out the top two choices in the morning on the morning line. That's going to lead me to my uh, three selections for this race, which are the six, the one, and the five. Obviously, KBG is going to be forwardly placed, uh, as is a Summer Storm, as is Kasserine Pass. All of these horses are going to be up and near the front. Uh, you can see we've got good speed coming from all of them. Uh, they're all relatively close in that category. That's overall speed. From a class perspective, the one appears to be the strongest. Um, the other ones are a little bit light, and that may be the big concern with the six and the five as well. You can't argue uh, with the connections as they're all up there, and I know the seven is as well. Um, but this is where I really start to get into it. Um, you've got some distance specialists. They hit the board a lot here. Um, you've also got some good race flow numbers. I will say the, the one intriguing one that's not on this list that I, I would probably add would be the four. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that in there just because the four does show up in enough other places I'm going through that this would be one I'd want to at least consider, especially considering it's going to be on the front and looks to get the best of the race flow quite substantially. So as I'm looking here, I feel like between these horses, uh, I've got a pretty good shot. Um, the parentheses numbers here is a new... Uh, metric I'm working on that looks at fair odds and and what the horse I believe is is a fair price for a win bet. Uh, now in this fifth race here I'm just going to make sure that I get uh, a number on the four as well. I have the four I'm probably not going to get I'm close actually um, but I have seven to one as fair odds on the number four so that's kind of what we'll be looking at. Um, I like to use these odds. Uh, I've been using them over the past couple weeks just to look at like if the six is under nine to five, then I'll look to the one. And if the one is above five to two, along with playing these in a, in a horizontal wager, I'll also just place a straight win bet on the one. So I kind of like to use it as a barometer for whether or not I'm going to play a win bet. Sometimes I'll also use it as a way to determine um, if I need to use the horse in a different way. So maybe I like the, the six at nine to five. I'm not getting that in the wind pool. But if I pair it with the one, I'm getting, you know, a great value in the exacta that if that gives me that nine to five return on investment. If I'm feeling confident about what the exacta will be, I hit a really nice um, exact yesterday at uh, Finger Lakes doing that. So um that's kind of what those numbers are and how I've been utilizing them. And it's an acti an exercise that I encourage you to do as well on your own, um, just to get practice with how much do you actually really like a horse? You know, I, I think the six is the most likely winner, but if he goes off at four to five, I'm not really sure I want anything to do with him. So now I've thrown out the top two favorites and that immediately buys me equity for the rest of the sequence. So let's see what we've got going on here in race number six. Race number six, we're going to be uh, a fast pace. We're going eight and a half furlongs on the dirt. To me, this one was almost a single. I decided to get a little bit more expansive only because I saw great value. So normally, I would play Running Ray, single the horse, and move on. Uh, Running Ray looks like it could get a pretty nice pace set up here, um, could get out in front, uh, should have some class that can carry it, stamina, speed, all looks good. I like Running Ray a lot. I'd be willing to play a win bet on Running Ray down to eight to five. Uh, Currently, it's sitting at 1.8, which is the equivalent to 6 to 5 on the morning line. So not quite there. I would need him to float up a little bit, and I'm not sure Running Ray will do that. I really also like Tuggle. Tuggle is another interesting one to me. This one's coming in at 5 to 1. Is you know has the potential to sit more of a stocking trip, but certainly could be on the lead as well, um, and and really could have a good kick home. The horse is in good form. I've got good class numbers, just as good as Run and Ray, uh, and so I really am going to use the four as a co A, even though it ranks as a C plus on the metrics. Everything I see says if the five doesn't win this, the four should. One of the things that I did want to point out here, why I didn't use Arabian Prince and why I jumped right down to Simovich, 
Uh, again, you've got that front running style. Now, one thing that I will caution is I'm putting a lot of stake here in running forward in a race that's projected to get really hot up front. Uh, that might suggest that somebody like an Arabian Prince is interesting. Now, if I think it's going to get hot and melt down, I've really got two choices here. I can look at Arabian Prince or I can look at Sono Grotto. And the reason I went with Arabian Prince, now obviously you're seeing 3 to 5 versus 20 to 1, so there's probably an ability factor there that the layman could see. Uh, but here's what I noticed. Okay. When we look at this, when I look for the pace to heat up, okay, when I've got a fast pace projection up front, the race flow is looking for horses with the best finish. If I've got a true closer, one that can pass horses, you're going to see here that I've got the seven on the on the board. I do not have the three. And you'll notice that we can connect that down here to the 112 pace number that this horse gets. So when I connect that, it suggests to me that this horse could be more forward or at least in a forward enough position to have a chance to use this late kick uh, at the end. The three sits behind it in, in sort of that early run, and then with a fast pace, we're looking at sort of a, a closing kick, um, and the three doesn't hit the board on that. So if I was looking there, I'd definitely look at Arabian Prince, but a, a closer at three to five, or at, uh, sorry, seven to two, I'm just not really interested in. I don't think that's good value. I'm willing to go four or five, and I'm willing to use Simovich uh, at a price, especially if we've seen speed uh, be particularly lethal, although I'm not not 100% convinced that Simovich is any good. Um, that's the thing that scares me a little bit is uh, pace numbers. This horse really shouldn't be able to, to do much. Um, race flow doesn't seem like much. Class doesn't seem like much. But sometimes in situations like this, you will see those horses run out and set blistering fractions. I, I think that will most likely set it up for running Ray and Tuggle. Um, but again, I'll kind of see if speed is just, you know, holding up completely regardless of price at Churchill, I might use the six as my B. If speed is is not holding or it's playing pretty fair, then I might be more inclined to look at the number seven Arabian Prince as my B type horse. Um, moving right along here to race number seven. So we started off with three horses that are not the favorite. I'm really only using two in that next leg uh, with one backup. This leg uh, is another one where again, I see two that, that rise above the rest. I like Flat Awesome Jenny at 8-5 to five, uh, or anything above 8-5 to five to win. And I like In the Mist of Biz for, uh, for a price of 9-5 to five or higher. Again, a lot of it's going to depend on how the track is playing. It scares me a little bit that Flat Awesome Jenny is a closer, likes to come from out of it. Um, and you can see that reflected in the pace projector where Flat Awesome Jenny is going to be well back. And that's why ultimately I decided not to just single this horse and move on. I do think that in the miss of biz is probably the right selection here. You can see it rates out tops on a lot of my uh, metrics here. Um, and it's going to be forwardly placed, which again, I, I feel like I'm, you know, uh, beating the drum over and over, but I think it's important to recognize that Churchill has just played to speed all meet long. I'll use those two and be comfortable. Um, the eight and the seven are more of price plays for me. Uh, I don't know that I'll use them in the pick five. I'll probably go skinny here. Um, although I'm, I'm already pretty skinny going three by two, not a huge ticket thus far. I may extend and just go four here in this race, or my other option is to come back. Uh, and if I'm still alive to, um, sort of hedge underneath with some of these horses in, in say a pick three or some doubles, uh, just kind of depending on where we're at. But I think I want to go most heavily through the one in the four, if I'm going to extend one more place, I would like to say it's the eight, but the seven actually provides me better value and gives me even further separation. So that's going to be one where I'm going to have to toy with the final ticket cost at the end and just sort of see where I go. But those are the four horses that I need to have. I don't really need anybody else. 
Moving on to our penultimate race, that's race number eight. This appears to be a slow pace, and that made this decision very easy. I'm going with Pneumatic. Um, Pneumatic, to me, looks like the horse is going to be on the front. I think Bone Ray Zone uh, has the early pace to suggest that it could potentially run with this one, but Bone Ray Zone doesn't want any part of the early pace. Bone Ray Zone is a deep closer, um, and and that's, that's the way that horse has been uh, since his time in New York. He's just kind of a grinder. Um, for that purpose, I think that means that it's possible Pneumatic gets out and goes. Endorsed will probably be there around uh, in those parts, but when we look at the metrics in the rating scale uh, through the middle column or through the T3 grid, you can just see that the four really towers over the rest, and, and I've got this horse uh, being value all the way down to six to five for the wind pool. After that, um, I think there's you know, basically three horses that also have a chance, uh, the two, the one, and the five. Uh, that's three technique endorsed in Sir Alfred James. Three technique is the one that tends to sit the furthest back of those, um, but nevertheless has good overall numbers uh, and I think could be interesting. Um, I'm willing to take that one down to seven to two, but honestly, if I can't get the four at six to five, I'm probably not going to play a win bet in this race um, just because I think the four's got it. Uh, these are viable options will be on one or two tickets um, but most of my money here is going to go through pneumatic who i look to have the best early pace who i look to outlast them late um, and hopefully can rely on some of that class uh, i didn't use bone ray zone um, that one seems to sort of uh, jump up when i don't like it and and fall back when i do uh, so this is probably one of those times where it will come through i just was very nervous about trying to get a late kick home in a race that's going to be slow and you can see that that just doesn't uh that doesn't show up on our race flow uh top five with with bone ray zone which is because it's favoring early speed in that in that case because of the fact that this race projects to be pretty slow on the front end so i'm going to single the four, uh, and I'll have, you know, one or two backup tickets with the two, one, five. And then here's my last strong opinion. This is a topsy turvy race. Uh, your class level 20 and the favorite on the morning line is Temple Bell. Temple Bell, I think is going to be appealing because Temple Bell comes out for good connections, but Temple Bell will also be forwardly placed and people are going to like to pour money into those heavily favored, um, you know, forwardly placed runners. This horse is fine. Uh, this horse is a decent horse, but it's not one that I want to run all my cash through. I think this is an incorrect favorite. I think the favorite should be and may in fact be at the time of post uh, Super Tail of Houdini. To me, that's the horse that, that needs it. Now, a couple of challenges. We've got relatively inexperienced horses, and you've got a horse coming from the outside um, in a mile race. So not going to have a ton of time to get down and get into that turn and is going to be looking for sort of that early pace. This is a horse that wants to be on the front end. And that piece of it is concerning, which is why I would never go with this horse alone. Um, and in fact, I didn't, I used the 10, the one and the two, but I really like those horses going forward. Um, and, uh, then I like the four, uh, Frontier Dynasty. Now, this is one that is going to come from out of it a little bit, but uh, what you can see here is a giant gap. I love to see if I'm going to pick a closer to win the to win the race. I like to see something big here. You can see this is a 13 point gap between those two compared to a two one zero. That tells me that this horse could have the finishing kick to get there, and I definitely want to use that one. The six horse Wicked Ecstasy uh, is a decent possibility uh, i put this one on the c line because i really want this horse to be at 10 to 1 it's currently at 8 to 1 but depending on where the money goes this horse could drift up and provide the value that i'm looking for when i go to play my pick five ticket i'm probably going to just go one two ten and four and then be prepared to swing back with a win bet on this one again this is a tough race because i have temple bell who's the current favorite, I have this one projecting on my numbers to be 9-1, to one, or that's where it should be. It's possible that that horse could go to 9-1 to one, um, if people don't like it. So I, the last leg is, is a tough one. But my, my strongest opinion for sure in this whole sequence is that in race 5, I don't like the favorite. So I'm going to probably be playing a lot of tickets 
into and out of race number five. Uh, in particular, sometimes what I'll do here is I'll play a skinny pick four ticket. So I'll single um, the four earlier in pneumatic, um, and then I'll play a, a really tight A's and B's ticket. Uh, I won't play a lot of backups, but then what I'll do is I'll come back with some like pick threes, some doubles um, that are more uh, expansive, making sure that I include the toss of the two favorites in race number five. So that's the way we're going to play this late pick five. Um, we'll kind of monkey around with it as scratches come in. Um, if you're a subscriber and if you have access to the portal, you will be able to see sort of how these numbers update when the scratches come out. So again, if you want access to all of that, go to our website, purchase the November package, just $5. It's going to get you Finger Lakes and Churchill for Wednesday. It's going to get you access to all the tracks for the weekend. That's Churchill, Gulfstream, Aqueduct, Del Mar. Um, Thank you again for your continued support of T3 Handicapping. Good luck on Wednesday at Churchill and throughout the rest of the week. Cash those tickets.